Now, lovers of ABC TV's Gardening Australia, and I know there are many, will know the face of presenter Leonie Norrington. She also happens to be a respected author, and when she's not attending her famous veggie patch, she's busy writing one of her many children's books. Her latest explores the lives of Aboriginal people living on and visiting Darwin beaches, and is about difference, but more importantly, sameness. Uncle Tobias sends the silver lure far out to sea to call the fishing. Sometimes we catch a skinny or a stingray. Or flicky prawns in a net. I've always loved stories. I've always been good at telling lies. I was one of those kids who absolutely... My brothers and sisters used to run to me if they ever got into trouble and say, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And I could always think up some sort of excuse. One of Leonie Norrington's strengths is that she, as Aboriginal people would say, grew up the territory. I was born in Darwin, but then we moved down to Barunga Community, which was then called Bamili. And um, we were, there was very, very few white people who lived there, and we were a family of seven kids. And so the Indigenous people that lived there decided that we needed to be brought up properly, because we, we were pretty feral. We used to run around in the bush all over the place. And, um, and so they gave the responsibility of us to the youngest wife of one of the most important ceremony men that were living there. And so she grew us up. She took us out into the bush and taught us how to find bush tucker and um, she was wonderful. When the rain stops, we collect pippies and long bums in the sand and find mangrove worms and fruit bats in the park. When you're dealing with issues that are complicated, like racism, or issues like land rights, or things like itinerance, the best way to put forward a story about that sort of thing is through the eyes of a child. Because when you start talking from a child's point of view, you talk with an innocence. You can ask questions and say, well, why? And it doesn't make people's alarm bells ring and say, oh, what are you trying to say? It's more like, yeah, if I was a kid, I would be thinking that. Our Place was one of those books that I really wanted to write for a long time before I even started it. I wrote it and I took it down to the beach because I think the most important thing about this book, which is a change from any other work that I've done, this was really looking at the world from an Indigenous point of view. And so I had to acknowledge that. I had to go out and meet with Aboriginal people and say, look, this is what I'm going to do. Do you think it's OK? Is it working? Is this the sort of thing that you think would work? And I can't draw. I'm absolutely hopeless at drawing, but that didn't put me off. I found Dee Huxley and I thought, this is the woman. She can do this book for me. And so I contacted her and she did some roughs. And after the roughs were done, I took them down to the beach. This is where she started to think about characters for the story. Mm. What do you think? Is she a good character? Mm. Yeah. No. Why? What's her legs that? too big. Oh, her legs are too big. Yeah. Not fat legs like white people. <laughs> oh, yes. This old man is thinking about his dream and these kids are playing. You think it looks good? Yeah. The dreaming part looks all right? Yeah. And is he cutting it right? Yeah. There was all this negotiation. And it was with different people because often, you know, somebody would come to town for two weeks and then they'd be gone. So often I'd go down there and have to reintroduce myself to a yeah. whole another group of people. Because you would have done that as a kid too. Yeah. Still do. Yeah. <laughs> I think what Dee is able to do is to capture movement and she can capture characters. And she also has this wonderful freeness. Her, her lines are, are long and enormous amounts of movement in it. And I thought that's exactly what we need in this situation on the beach. You know, where you're, when you're fishing and you're twirling things and your waves are crashing in and and people are running and they're talking and they're doing all sorts of stuff so that wonderful freeness was really fantastic when i first start to write i've just got those little 
exercise books. I start jotting down ideas and it always starts from an idea and you just fill this book, you get, it fills up with shopping lists and all sorts of other things as well. But all the time, all of these ideas are just running around in your head and you write them in that book. And I often start talking to people about my characters as if they're real. Like they'll say, oh, so-and-so did such and such. And I'll say, oh, just so did... Oh, that's a character. That's not real. <laughs> Which is a bit embarrassing sometimes. It'd be terrible I'd never get anything done if I had to have quiet. I live in a very noisy house and um, my husband's shed is just up the back there so he's screaming away with all sorts of power tools. But I've got my wonderful trusty headphones that I put on and it blocks out the rest of the world and I'm quite happy. I think gardening is an essential part of writing. There's a lot of people who are writers who are also gardeners and I reckon the reason is weeds. Because when you can't think of what to say next in your book, you go outside and you lean over and you start pulling out weeds and all the blood rushes to your head and all the thoughts come. <laughs> I often feel like a fraud as a writer because I didn't read books as a kid. Because I'm not a teacher or an academic or I don't even know a hell of a lot about writing. All I know is that kids need stories and kids need stories about themselves and they need stories that are going to legitimize themselves and make them feel good and know that they can go somewhere that they see characters in it that they can relate to that they know about i know that is incredibly important <laughs> what a character and two of Leone's books have been shortlisted for this year's children's book council of australia awards to be announced in august we wish her the best of luck still to come on sunday arts Virginia meets a star of the literary firmament, Juno Diaz. Most of what being human is about is dealing with the consequences of our mistake and our limitations. Paprika Balkanicus are newcomers to the world music scene, but already these talented musicians from Central Europe have played with the likes of Nigel Kennedy and picked up a BBC World Music Award along the way. It's their first visit to Australia, so let's hear their wild gypsy sounds, and afterwards they'll catch up with Fenella Kernabone.